Alright, welcome back everyone. So last time we had stopped at the beginning of chapter 13. So we're starting at pretty much the same point where we were. And uh, as much as this, by the way, wall run looks stupid. Uh, if you don't press it right, you can still, you know, fall. And you lose a shit ton of time if you fall here. Uh, did it ever happen to you? Because I think it happened to me once. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I've tried to skip uh, a cycle by d timing it just right, and then I, I, I've fallen in runs before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it, it's because it's something that I think you do naturally up to a point, but even after a while, I guess if you press, if you repress too quick on the joystick. Oh, uh, side note, by the way, uh, there's an, a little elixir in there. Just want to re mention it in case uh, we didn't in chapter 10. So uh, people can refill there, I guess. But yeah, really easy to fall if you're not careful and you, you don't time your jump. And because of how long is that wall run going up, you I don't know. I, I, I feel that you depend on how high you fall from. Oh, yeah. So I know I need to mention that before. If you fall like here, like I just did there, and you have the, well, the reflex to jump, what it's going to do is something like this. And then you're gonna lose a lot of time so be careful when you get up depend on what side because if you start jumping from the left side here you're gonna end up on the right side on top but if you start jumping from the right side you end from the left so you gotta be careful because this side sometimes you will walk clean here and then if you press jump too fast you fall all the way down and it's the same thing for the other one where if you missed out the jump you probably lose i would say approximately at least 20 seconds depending on how I you fall from I guess but it's just approximation I guess and you know not a hundred percent sure well, how, how long do you think we lose if we fall from there both of these yeah and that's probably that's probably at least that yeah yeah because it's pretty uh, it's pretty damn high so this one remember I said before in chapter 10 if you clear the bats you don't have to well you don't have to fight them there but if you got in fast enough, you didn't clear the bat, so there's a couple of moves you can do in here if the bats are here. You can do, I guess, the simple double square like this and can clear couple. Or you can do the 360Y, which will do this. And usually, from my experience, the 360Y will clear most of the bat here, and then after you can just go up. It's just that if you don't clear the bat, they're, they're going to chew on you and, well, they, they deal... A surprising amount of damage if you want for how little their damage is you know they're they're pretty surprising yeah. I think yeah and you want your HP high because your next fight is awake in Alma so that's important all right so here do you feel it's probably worth mentioning um, the extra yeah. talisman if needed right where we're I'm, yeah I'm not gonna take it but I mean you can uh, yeah, you can say what we need to do here to acquire it because I don't know how many info it is entirely uh, yeah, so, uh, I think it's like five. Okay, so it's like five six in Azumas. Uh, but if you kill all the zombies here, uh, they'll drop a talisman for you as a reward. And then, uh, and then you don't have to buy another one. So you'll have, well, I mean, why do I have two there? Did I get another uh, one? You, you, you got one in chapter one, and then you got one on chapter three. three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're yeah. right. So technically, you can have three then. That's just, I mean, safety measure, you know? So yeah. that that's that would be a, an extra one. I mean, if you lost another one and you don't feel comfortable with it, there's smoke bomb not really needed. There's no other place uh, that we use it in the end of the game. I don't know. I saw you, I guess, mention maybe Mirai smoke bomb, but I think that if we include that, it would probably more be in the advanced chat uh, if that would do anything. And I'm not sure, you know, because I never really tried it until you mentioned it the other time on the speedrun Discord. So. Yeah, that one I was just testing some stuff. But that's why I mentioned it, you know, that the smoke bomb are there. Because technically, I mean, if we find that there could be something there with the, the smoke bomb on Mirai, then it's worth picking up. But otherwise, for this, you know, beginner's guide, you're not picking it up because you're not going to use it. Yeah. Now here it's kind of, I don't know, it's pretty standard navigation, you know, all the way to Alma. There's there's nothing special. I mean, you can get better, I guess, with the movement, you know, going from one place to the other. But that's pretty much a feel. I cannot really, I, I don't know, give specific strat on how to 
work your movement there, you know? So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I guess one thing that's worth noting is that the back at the Hayabusa Village, when you enter, you can get the Inazuma level three. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. time wise, it's it's not as good as level two, but it does save you Nimpo for chapter 15. Yeah. Good. So could be worth it, I guess. So you destroyed the, the rock that you can't at the beginning of uh, chapter two when entering the village. So you can take Lunar level three and then uh, do it. So, I mean, here I'm showing this start, and this is the ideal start. Uh, most most people would probably just go for FS, but that's what we talked about a little bit earlier that Digital is going to mention, is that if you really just go for FS all the time, I mean, it, it might take you a while, you know, to do that fight. Yeah, you're just waiting for good RNG. So he starts off the fight with the Hay Slash, and then uh, does the Flying Swallow, and then he does Gleaming Blade. Um, and then I always forget what the name of the that one is. I have no fucking clue. Actually, we should check okay. it. Uh, what is the knockdown? Let's go check it in the move. Yeah, I'm terrible, by the way, too, with the move lifts. And I know that was a really decent <laughs> Awakened Alma. Yeah, that was really, really good. That was really decent. So entering the, pyra the, the pyramid, you, you want to always have Inazuma. Preferably before I equip it, usually after uh, uh, Shmogen or Smogen. Simply because if, you know, uh, Awaken Alma decides to go for a grab, it's, well, it's a good uh, escape, I guess. So have that equipped before the fight. And then we're just going to go check the name of the move properly, the little 360 move. Uh, it is called the Flying Crane. There it is. The Flying Crane, which is the, well, the version before the Gleaming Blade. So if you if you just tap, and do why it does that. If you hold it a little bit, it will do Gleaming Blade. So that's the name of the move. That I probably won't remember the name, to be I fair. Know. After I Gleam or something. Yeah, fly. <laughs> so it's Flying Crane. It's the small version of the Gleaming Blade. That's, that's how we're going to call it. So here, um, there's an extra uh, Great Spirit if needed. So you can always grab it. And then, and then that that part I think is, I mean, it's gonna be the same strat for either basic or advanced, because you're kind of, you know, like praying for an impo drop, and uh, and I guess there's different valid strat, because I I usually go for for trying to group up ultimate technique mainly because of the shop, you know, the the last shop yeah. on chapter 14, but I've also seen. You know that you can do like just regular wall run and like wall attack like this and i mean sometimes it will force nimple drop if you're lucky and another thing is that it's going to kill these guys in one shot the only downside i think to doing that personally is that if you don't know the amount of money that you already have and you're just going for wall attack you might get to the next chapter where you will be lacking, I think, and you might not be able yeah. to buy everything. So it's kind of a risk, and I don't think it's worth doing wall attack if you're not sure that you have more money than what you need. And and I don't know, like, I wouldn't even do that by taking a chance, if that makes sense, because, well, because it's really risky to lack item entering the chapter 15 core. And I think it's pretty important to, well, to have, you know, everything necessary. The only thing I would say is an extra, and I don't know if uh, Digital agree, I think would be the Armlet of the Sun. You know, that's an, an extra that you don't necessarily have to get, but... It can, yeah, that's a small bonus, yeah. It can be a nice little one, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, TGD is pretty much just dumping his Nimpo that he gets into them, and then any extra... Uh, or if he doesn't get any reds, he was just uh, he was showing off the wall spam. But normally you can do a UT there to get a lot of money if you really need it. Yep. Um, other you could just yeah you could do wall spam if you if you don't need the money and then just do like X Y into them. Uh, what you mentioned also in the, the well in the first part that we did before this chapter is you did say that there was some 5k chess along the way and I think if people all go for those 5k chess you're always going to have enough money at this point I think so then you can possibly go for more wall attack you know but you will yeah. also have lost a little bit of time going to get those chests along the way of course so that's you have to take that in consideration. 
Yeah, we didn't really get into the combat with Awakened Alma. This is kind of to assume you know how to fight her and avoid her abilities because there's, I mean, you could, you know, you could go through a lot with each of the bosses. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's just that's just how the speedrun tactics are. And and I I just want to specify something too uh, is that I I could have got my ass kicked there. <laughs> that was just you know that was just a, a a really good fight and you don't always get those so. You don't really use that as an indication if you want on how easy or hard that bo boss is. Y you know, it's funny now because we have a little pause time here before we get to the next part. There's a lot of people that think the first Alma is harder. And I really think it's because most people get there the first time. Then they have a really hard fight. And after when they get to the second one, maybe they get a little bit easier. And they think she's easier, you know, but she's, right. she's not. Yeah, no, I think Awaken Alma is actually worse. So, spam of Nimpo here, nothing really special. If you do get a drop, uh, well, use it to re nimpo those guys. Now, how they place you in um, in that area is pretty much uh, centered to where the chest is going to appear. So, if you can keep your your screen center, if you want to where you start nimpoing, you, the chest is always going to appear at the same place. So you can use that, I guess, as a reference to position Ryu right after the fight so that, well, he, he's able to grab the chest instantly. So when you get here at the end, it always depends, I guess, the amount of money that you have when you get to that shop. So priority, you always want to refill your elixir, I think. So you always go for it. Then you fill up those. We're already filled on that because I think we had extra from grabbing the 5k chest. Usually, I think you're at 3 when you get here. So you're going to be buying two extras. Uh, this one, uh, no, this one, you will always miss one, but you're getting it either. You, so there's two, I feel, right? There's one in Chapter 14, and then there's the other one after Chapter 15 uh, on the first fight, I think. So uh, Yes, yep. So, so if you're lacking, if you're, if you're missing one or you want to use extra one, there's always those two, and we can show where they are. After this, most important, refill the arrows. A, P, F, uh, anyway, those arrow, yeah. <laughs> explosive arrow, shuriken, if you didn't grab it in chapter 10, but I showed to grab it, and I think it's, I, I think honestly that the amount of time that it takes to grab the shuriken in chapter 10 is worth it versus the amount of time that it takes for you to refill them in the shop, so technically, if you didn't forget, you get here, you're not supposed to be buying incendiary shuriken, if you forgot about it, Refill them, of course, because they can be useful against Emperor 2 if needed. Now, on this run, because I can, I will get it. But as Digital mentioned earlier, this is an extra. And it's not something that you will get on the majority of the run. But for the purpose of that run, because we have the money, we're going to get it. So after you buy all of that, get out of the shop. Going to equip the True Dragon Sword. If you did get the Armlet of the Sun, make sure you equip it. Because if not, if you buy it and you don't, it's... Kinda gonna be wasted. Yep. So yeah, we're so we all have... movement. Go ahead, explain. <laughs> explain yeah, a little bit. So the ghost fish, there's two ways you or there's three ways you can go around them. One is on landing jumps, like uh, you saw TGD doing. Uh, that one is uh, probably the harder of the three. And then the other is air destruction slash, which is jumping forward X. Gotcha, uh, and then the X last up. one is yeah and the last one is wall running so that one can be risky because if you if you don't hold forward or the wall you know turns or something and it shortens your distance you can get bit when you land so just keep that in mind that you need to understand the environment before you just do uh, only wall runs and then if you go through that tunnel the fish won't chase you so go through that every time and then grab this key and then uh, we get ahead right back where we came that it really depends. You don't always get back on top, so I guess you kind of have to adapt to, well, where you fall. So if you fall down, you do the same thing, but you go all the way around. I mean, this one was kind of not bad, except for the laser at first, I guess. Here, okay, from what I've seen, also you can uh, hold your uh, your joystick. I guess would say roughly like seven o'clock, and then just instantly jump like this is gonna put you in the the middle. And now I'm going to do the on landing jump, but again, as Digital say, you can do uh, air destruction slash with uh, with X and the air forward X. Because those area here are, I think, are all uh, hard to navigate if you want. And I actually even fucked it up here, so it's 
it's easy to fuck up those area. Or you grab the chest and then when you come back, do the, the same part. A little bit of air destruction slash and now also just for yeah. the purpose of this I'm gonna heal like don't enter Doku with that amount of health. <laughs> Not a good idea. Yeah, yeah, he'll yeah, he'll finish it real quick. Now uh, here, uh, I always gotta be careful. I think with the depth perception, because sometimes I feel like I'm on the wall faster <laughs> than I'm actually are, and then I end up coming short and I get hit by the by the ghost fish, you know. Yeah, and then right before he entered that door, he rolled into the door. That way, he wouldn't like accidentally aim at the fish or anything crazy. So here, um, you the the strat is to gleaming blade him um and you'll probably want to be at least two roll jumps distance away from him and then wait for him to start charging in like that and you you need to react when he starts moving in that's when you start your gleaming blade if you do it before he's just going to keep throwing his gauntlet or his sword at you, you and you're never going to get him so you see how tgd is reacting and then he goes in and does the gleaming blade that's that's how you do the fight that was a good fight yeah, that was a decent fight. I also played it a little more secure, you know, where I was really just baiting his, uh, his shoulder shrug, I guess, or whatever you call it, where he moves his yeah. shoulder and come towards us. So uh, that, that's what you want to bait at first. You don't, because you can YOLO that boss close range, but it's extremely unpredictable. Sometimes you can decide to block your entire gleaming blade and then followed by a grab, which is grab does massive damage. It's pretty insane, actually, how much damage it does. Yeah, and then he can also throw his sword, which he has iframes yeah. when he throws the sword, and it's just it's just shredding you. It's not worth it. Especially if you're in the gleaming blade, you know, it can come back yeah. multiple times on you. It's like a boomerang, so it can come yeah. back multiple times on you and then hit you like all those times. Wow, that was funky. <laughs> yeah, so this chapter is probably the one of the most long-winded ones. It feels like it because it's so far into the run. Uh... So here he, he grabbed that devil elixir we were talking about. We get to go over here, grab this key to turn around and go go use it. Uh, and then it's uh, four floors of, of fiends. Now, uh, what I'm going to do, and, and that's, I guess that's just a bit, but I'm going to use Nimpo like I always use it. And I think that up to a point in here, in the first floor of the core, the first four, I would say, you can kind of use Nimpo f more freely if you want, not like a madman, but up to a point, like worst things that's going to happen is that you'll get to Marble's Gauntlet and you can you don't have like that much Nimpo if you want to clear, but that's not really the end of the world, I would say. Yeah, and by the end of this to the top, you want to have, I think, I would say three Nimpo, whether it's in your inventory or in, you know, in your Nimpo slots up there. For, for Marvis and then two on Emperor 2. So uh, here he's using the level two in Azuma. Uh, if you use the level three, it, it I don't know. I never did the statistic, but I would say it's probably eight or nine times out of 10, you're gonna one shot those fiends if you're hitting them with it. Uh, one small thing to know is TGD is um, staying a, kind of away from that, that tree trunk in the middle because that's like a barrier that will protect them from the Inazuma. So that's uh, something important to know because if you stand right next to it, you're not really going to get the full range of uh, of the Inazuma. Yep. And also, a uh, note important to mention is that if you have level 3 Inazuma, the animation is longer to cast. So the, yep, the level that's why it's actually slower, yeah. The level 2 one is a lot faster to... Uh, here, just do air destruction slash, I would say. Uh, everyone yeah. should do that at the beginning. Don't really do on landing jump. It's really risky. Uh, because the elevation when going up it means you do it you need to do it faster and it's it's trickier and we're gonna explain more more of that in uh, the uh, the advanced guide for for those interested so did we get any nimpo drop no nimpo drop no yeah so I forgot to mention so the first the first floor is all red dinos uh, the second one is I think it's six red dinos. And then the rest are the pill bugs. It's, it's five, uh, five exactly red dino. Is it five? Yeah, okay. yeah, five, five exactly. I'm surprised actually that I did not cut the, the pill bugs in that. He was right, right. here. Yeah, that was He's strange. just watching in the audience. <laughs> does that attack, I mean, of course it's individual target, but if they jump into it, it does a lot of damage. 
but he's 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 played this game. He knew. Right? Yeah, he knew. <laughs> the VIP build bugs. Yeah. Uh, my end goal here to enter that was not good. I'm just letting it know. <laughs> it's not good. I entered a little off. So here, the most important one to hit is, well, is this guy, you know. So the rest is a nice bonus, but you want to make sure that the two Nimpo hit this guy. And then the other one was kind enough to give me a little Nimpo drop. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the four smaller or lesser fiends. And if you're hitting them, that's great, like DGG said. But you want to focus the two on uh, that big crab. Hmm. Well, I mean, that nimple was nice, but <laughs> uh, don't need it. So here, here I'm, I'm almost waiting that I make sure, as Digital said earlier, that these guys are not behind the tree. And I don't care about taking a little bit of damage. Uh, well, simply because it's, it's better to take a little bit of damage than not hitting them because you cast the nimple. Too fast. We're gonna heal just in case. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna risk it right now. These guys can do nuclear damage. They yep. can go underground, by the way, to try to grab you. And I mean, I wish I could kind of just spend time trying to show what happened when it does that. But it, it's something that you have to kind of time your roll. Uh, and I mean, you have to learn that. Even if I show it in in different situation. They don't always go at the same speed. They're not always at the same distance. So you kind of have to gauge that yourself. So as Digital also mentioned earlier here. So you say I have no Nimpo left. And that that's kind of perfect that it happened like this in a way. Because I can show how to manage Nimpo at that point. Because of that. So always want... I left the chest by the way. I left the chest with a great devil elixir for after, and I left the chest also with a great spirit uh, elixir. Uh, I will show both of the of these chests. So this one is the same as we did last time. It's just this time we have the true dragon sword, and this one has a little more health, but the strategy is pretty much the same. Yep. There's a couple of time where I tried to go with the Fire wheel to see if I could possibly get a to to cycle, oh, you know. And, to cycle, yeah, I've tried it too. <laughs> and every time, I don't know why, I get I get such a shitty pattern when I try to do it that I've stopped trying. You know, I, I kind of gave up because every time yeah. it was giving me something that I I couldn't do it. Because I mean, that extra amount of health that is left is is, is not huge or anything, you know. But right. it seems that if you don't take it right, it, it just doesn't work. So I also don't do the charge here uh, in the middle, even if we didn't talk about it uh, with the dragons, the true dragon sword, because it does enough damage to take out the tentacle real, real quick, so I don't really have to. So now the fact that I have, well, two Nimpo and we need one for Marbus means right now that I can't, well, I cannot, uh, I cannot use Nimpo anymore, so I'll have to kill the enemy regularly. Yeah, we're kind of hoping for some reds here, but uh, looks like he's not getting any no, right now. I'm not. So we're going to preemptively equip the Lunar for Jotunfrau right after, and it's going to be the same concept as uh, Hydrocubus. We're going to do the same strat as before. And, <laughs> and I mean, this one can troll us at the end, you know, really hard. So and it's kind of the same with Marbus, really depend. We'll see what we get. Oh. <laughs> oh, we get a little, uh, we get what you don't want in a run pretty much, and it's alright that he actually does that right now, because this way if it ever happened in your run, you oh, know, man. you know you can't do anything against that. <laughs> uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm gonna go behind, you know, beginner set, I'm gonna go behind. If he does that, go behind. Don't, don't try to keep attacking him. Uh, there, there's a timing to that, by the way, but... We're, we're gonna get into it in the uh, advanced guide if possible, not in this one. Because I think it's too risky for people to try that and then that guy does a lot of damage. Yeah, he hits like a truck. Yeah.
especially if he bounces you against the wall, you know, it's it's even more damage. So I'm gonna let you explain the the Marbus strat, depend on what he does here. I don't know if he's. <laughs> I, I was gonna say I don't know if he's going to spawn some spawn beans, some yeah. beans, yeah. Yeah, so you're waiting for this dive, and then uh, it's different between level two and level three timing. Uh, but he, TGD waited for him to actually start diving at him. Um, and then what are you doing? You're doing XXXY? Yeah, XXXY. Okay. Yeah, so uh, once you stun him with the Inazuma, uh, he's using the two dragon sword and doing XXXY. Uh, I would just recommend this one. There is another one, but it's, it's really not even that much of a difference. So... Uh, and then you, once you see the HP blink in, you can do Gleaming Blade at the end there, or you can just keep doing the same combo yep. in case you know, you're not feeling comfortable doing a Gleaming at the end. Yeah, as you said, it's different the timing for a level 2 because it's longer to cast, so I don't really know when you have to cast it, but it's definitely before <laughs> before the one, the one I did. Yeah, level 3, you time uh, pretty much as soon as you start seeing him uh, start the spinning animation before he even dives at you. There you go. So now here, uh, that's the one I mentioned I left there earlier. You always grab that. You have an extra one here uh, if needed. All right. So what you can do before that is you can already equip what you need for the next fight. So you're going to start with the explosive arrow, fire wheel, and then you're going to refill uh, your, your, your nimple pretty much. Mm -mm. Yeah, so while uh, TGD is getting ready to go to Emperor 1, so Emperor 1, we use uh, Gleamy Blade. Uh, if you, you know, you're floating on a rock and it's very different because you haven't in the entire game. So you use left trigger to hover up and down. Uh, so that's how you can avoid some of the laser blasts. Um, and then you have to hit uh, the Emperor's shoulders and then the chest piece. So. It doesn't matter uh, which one you like. If you if you break an arm or a shoulder, you can't move after the animation. You know the cutscene is happening, but the second one you can. So you can attack during the cutscene uh, and get that much more damage down while while nothing's essentially happening on the map. So here TGD can't move, and then after the next the next cycle, uh, he's able to do another one, which can help him. Uh, and the fight in the middle of the cutscene if if everything ended well. That yeah, so there he was hitting one. two. Nice. And then uh he yeah, he was able to do the gleaming blade in the middle of that cutscene, so no risk. Okay, so this one I'm not gonna do like the strat where I jump forward. I'm just gonna do the strat where I stay at that specific point uh at the beginning so people can just start shooting. Uh and we'll explain the advanced one in the well, in the next video, I guess. But this one is yeah. going to be from that distance. So you're just going to start aiming right away around that part. And then when you get around eight arrows, you want to cast your fire wheel. And then after you're going to go down when it's two arrows, you're going to go with this. And then he came way faster like he did the other ah, time. Holy so, cow. so, I mean, it's good, though, that this happened because people can see what to do if that happens. So what if that happened... Cancel the nimple like this so he doesn't bite you, but this is just super unlucky. <laughs> it's yeah, just super really, unlucky. Really unfortunate. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, TGD is just going to sit here and pepper him with explosives, but uh, the strat is once you get down to two, three arrow marks, you can make sure you have that second uh, fire wheels going, and then you're going to start charging a gleaming blade, and then you can uh, gleaming blade the big head, and uh, it does a ton of damage on him. Yeah, this is where the run or the it's fight gets really annoying because he's running low on explosives. Thanks, thankfully, he's gonna be able to finish him off here. But uh, it it gets really annoying once you're out. <laughs> that was that was a terrible fight. Very unlucky. Yeah, but it, it happened, and it's almost good that it happened in a in a guide like this because people like will see what is the worst possible <laughs> outcome that you can have in that fight. It's pretty much what just happened there. Yeah, and if you're not, if you have the bad timing like TGD did, uh, make sure you're iframing through the head because the animation, it does a lot of damage, but it takes a long time. Yes, yes. So that's that's some of the big parts. And just just avoid it. Don't if, if you aren't ready with the Gleaming Blade, then just try to avoid it. So 
we're gonna use the regular jumping here. Nothing, I'm not gonna do anything fancy. You just jump towards there. Almost fell down. <laughs> and then we're just gonna do the regular re you just re jump here. You get here and boom, re jump. Grab the branch here. Yeah, okay. and. Go ahead, go Once you're here, you're. This is the last chapter, and uh, I'll admit, when I first started running, I had nerves like crazy, and so it definitely affects you when you're trying to do this platforming, uh, and especially fast since it's a speed run. So I would say like practice this like a ton, make it just muscle memory and not even a, a factor for you to lose the run. Here, I just want to explain something very important, and I'm. I'm almost gonna show it because we can always reload the save if needed, but the air, as, as stupid as it is, okay, that jump, if you run and you jump like this, you know, you, you always you always get it, no problem, all right? But if you have the mistake of rolling and jumping, it will do something like this. And then if that happens, you have to go back like all the way around here, okay? So I just wanna show that never, never make that mistake so i'm gonna reload real quick the save but i want to show it to, to people because it happened to me before long ago so i mean it, it it can happen so save 16 is right there because ro uh, rolling on certain area makes your jump shorter so it's, um, it's something to keep in mind. You always just want to... Also, the fact when you run towards the side of that edge, they're, they're, you cannot fall, as far as I know, when you're running. So, it, it's just you you position yourself to make sure you're against the, the edge, and that's it. Jump, jump. Going to show the same same one again. Not going to do anything uh, fancy here. Same with how you angle yourself going up here. <laughs> you don't angle yourself right. It's easy to wall cling and just fall off. But just center yourself with the, the ledge, I guess, that you need to grab. So you run like this. You can continuously run. You just jump straight. Yep, and then, uh, spoiler alert, it's, uh, Fiend Mirai. <laughs> is the last boss. Um, so, yeah, Gleaming Blade is, uh, is r the highest damage strat, and then, uh, he's also using the Fire Wheels here to, uh, get some iframes, but also some passive damage in between his combos. Um, uh, his biggest threat is his grab, and that's, like, lightning fast. And actually and did so a counterattack here. Did a counter attack the fucker. <laughs> <laughs> so here, since it's the last boss of the entire game, don't be shy on using talisman or your heals and anything. Uh, exactly, and he does nuclear damage, so make sure you use it, use them. So for that dive attack, uh, TGD rolled through it. Uh, it, it he can kind of control which way Mariah's gonna go, and also avoid the damage with with uh, really good timing. There we go. That that boss though uh, is is kind of like a coin toss, 50 50 50. It's it's kind of how he wants to behave, you know, and you gotta get a feel for it, I guess, for well, for the situation that you're in. But uh, but that's it. Uh, that's it with the the game. That was the beginner's guide. I don't know if uh, digital has anything to add for this one, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Yeah, um, I don't have anything else except uh, if you have any questions, feel free to join the Ninja Gaiden Discord and uh, everyone there is really helpful with giving tips and advice because a lot of us have played this game a lot. So we have uh, plenty of experience to share for those that are wanting to learn. Yes, and also uh, make sure if there's anything, you can also type it uh, in the question comment below uh, on, uh, on YouTube. All right.